this is my first ever Q&A, so we'll see how it goes. I'm going to read out some questions that I've been sent and then I'm going to answer them. I am Daniel Brennan. I am a freelance lighting designer and that's what I do for State. I'm, I do the lighting design. What shows and workshops have you worked on with State? My number one show is Gilgamesh. That's my baby. That's my work. Gilgamesh or Enkidu? We've actually just had a similar discussion and because of that discussion, I'm going to go with Enkidu. I think his character art from where he starts Everything that he goes through and then when where he ends up um, afterwards is... It's just a really interesting story. Rome or London? Okay. London. It has to be. Because that's where the design was able to fulfil its potential the most. Uh, I loved Rome. I loved everything about it. It was a absolute privilege to be there. But London was where it very st first started and it's just where I feel like the design was at its peak at the time. Pancakes or waffles? Pancakes. Simone or Tida? Um, Tida sent me the questions, so she has the balls to ask, so that goes to you, Tida. LEDs or tungsten and white? Just going back to that previous question. That doesn't mean that I don't like Simone. I, I like you both equally, but... Okay, LEDs or tungsten and why? In Gilgamesh, we actually use both. I tend to use both for different reasons. As a general rule, I would always go for LED. Um, it's much more modern, it's much more practical. You could throw six LED lights up into a rig and they would do the job that 30 tungstens would do. But there is one trade-off, and that is when you go from 10% intensity down to off zero, there's a curve that an LED has that a normal tungsten doesn't. Um, it's something that LEDs just can't do. So for that reason, I would have to go for tungsten in that way. But LEDs, has to be. Rigging or striking, it has to be the rigging, just because it's where you start to realise your vision and see the practicalities of that start to take off and that's really, really exciting. You know, you're in the space for the first time and it's happening. Um, who is Gilgamesh to me? Mm. Gilgamesh is an interesting character. He's he's a character that I go to a lot when I'm struggling to find something for the scene. He's someone that me as a designer can rely on for inspiration. It's someone who I can follow and track a mood with or you know, there's always something tangible with him that I can pull out. He's the inspiration that I need when I can't find any. My first instinct is to head to him. I guess he's more of an anchor for me um, as a designer. What was the design concept for this beginning scene? So this is what I call a capital letter scene. It's one that starts everything and I like to have hints of what's to come and that's kind of like a foreboding, foreshadowing. I take little snippets that you'll recognise later on. So you'll notice some intensities or an angle of a specific light or colours that you'll, you may be able to pick up on. So if you look at the start of Gilgamesh and then you watch it, you'll see little, and hold that in your mind, you'll see little snippets. But it's all about framing that opening and giving it that powerful, that first interaction, that first look. And I like that to have a, a meaning and a poignant start that follows through the rest. So what I tend to do for the opening scene is I'll look at my design for the rest of the show and pick out bits that I think would work and then put them into that. And I call that the capital letter moment, the start of what's to come. What's the most complicated thing about lighting this scene? Adib. Adib is the hardest thing by far because he moves a lot. It's simply the fact that Performers, as a rule, can't find the light and, and don't stand where you put them. And it's difficult for this scene in particular because it has a, it's quite a, a moody start. And then I wanted this light to kind of reach in and pick him out. But he isn't always in the same place, so that means that you then have to make that wider. And then you start to lose the design around the edge. And it's, there's only so far I can go before I'm like, well... There's just no point. I might as well just light the whole stage. Love what you do, though. It doesn't really matter. It's fine. 
it's a, it's a good trade-off and it's good to react to stuff like that. So um, happy to do it, love to do it. Can you list all the lighting fixtures used in this scene? The lighting fixtures are as follows. We have Colour Source Linears doing the Psych. We have Colour Source Pars doing the Top Light. We have Source for Luster Twos, I think, with the Fresnel attachment doing the body. And Source for Profiles with a 26 degree lens doing the um, shins. We also have Mac Auras up in the air. We have Mac Encores up in the air and Robe 7000s, I think, up in the air. We also have two sets of battens at the back and a, another source for profile with a 50 degree lens on, which I'm going to change to a 90 degree because it wasn't quite wide enough. My error. <sighs> How do you like different skin tones and why is this important? This is something that I really, really care about, especially when you have a cast like Gilgamesh's where you've got so many different skin tones to go off of. It's a bit like taking a picture with a really, really crappy point and shoot camera and then taking the same picture with a DSLR camera. The colours just aren't the same. Even though it's the same picture, they're just not the same. And it's like that with skin tones as well. You can have the same colour hitting the body, but because the skin tones in the body are different, the colour doesn't look the same. And that's really, really crucial to have that line linear look and have everything hitting nicely and having nothing standing out. ETC is the lighting software that I use, and they have a very specific colour picker that enables me to be very, very detailed in not only the colour, but the way that the colour is constructed. So usual lights work off of RGB or CMY um, colour spectrums. ETC lights and ETC control consoles um, tend to use seven colours. So they'll have a normal CMY and then they'll have like ambers and limes and stuff like that. So you can go into so much detail with with what you want and you know really really create that and that's something that's super useful for skin tones for costume for all sorts of different things but i used it for skin tones in this particular instance and because we're using dance lighting that means that i can go right because dance lighting is kind of tiered so it goes along the edge uh, stage left and stage right edge of the stage in blocks which means that I can be really, really specific about what light hits what person in terms of the blocking and therefore can faff around with skin tones in a lot more detail than I usually would with a standard rig. It's super important. It's super, super important just because it just makes everything look so clean, so polished. It's not easy. It's very time consuming, but worth it, in my opinion, if you have the time and you have the resources to do that. What software do you use? Uh, what equipment and prep do you need? Um, software, as I said, ETC. For me, it is where technology and design and art cross. It is the ultimate expression of what lighting can do in theatre, in my opinion. That's a very biased opinion. What prep do you need? I love, in terms of my preparation, a few days by myself with the script is great, but then rehearsal time. Rehearsal time is where I get, I'd say, 85-90% of my ideas. It's reacting to what happens in the room, and I, you just get so much more from just listening and being aware in the rehearsal space. So as much time in the rehearsal space as possible is a game changer for me. And then once again, as much time in the performance space, with the desk, with the equipment, with everything. I guess time is the biggest factor in designing a show. You know, you can just walk into a theatre and point some lights and do some pretty colours and cool whatever, but it's when you get down to it and you sit in that rehearsal room and you put in the work, that's when, that's when I think you can call yourself a designer. And that's, you know, taking that inspiration and finding that in what the directors are saying, what the performers are giving you, what the text is giving you, what your own research is giving you. Putting all that together, that is my preparation and that for me is lighting design. And then of course putting that into practice and understanding the practicalities of that. My gosh, yes, of course. Um, don't really know if that answers the question, but sure. Who are your inspirations? I have one big one. His name is Malcolm Rippeth. I had the pleasure of meeting him, which was <laughs> absolutely amazing. Truly, truly great man. He's just great. He works a lot with Nihai and a lot with Emma Rice. The way he creates his work is just beautiful. His process, I just love everything about 
what he does and what he creates. Um, so him. If you could dedicate your lighting design for this scene to anyone, who would it be? Adib. Has to be Adib. You can have it. It's yours. How do you survive a day in lockdown? Honestly, I design. Well, I, I don't just design. I go out with my camera, I take my dogs for a walk, try and be active. But yeah, I, you know, I've got a couple of things in the pipeline which may go ahead this year, may not, who knows. But it's, it's having that drive that knowing that it's it's gonna happen someday the this work that I'm doing now is gonna is gonna come to life and that pushes me forwards because I want to see that and you know I've put in a lot of work because we've had a lot of time so yeah that's what keeps me going my work I guess where's the first place you will go after lockdown is over hopefully back to work hopefully into a rehearsal room and hopefully into a theatre to put on one of these shows that um, myself and State have been working on. There's been a lot of backwards and forwards, a lot of communication, a lot of meetings and so on, and you know, a lot of buzz, even though with everything going on, I know it's, that's sometimes difficult to see, but there's been a real atmosphere recently and I'm super, super excited to get back and push forward. And that is me done. <laughs> you've enjoyed it give me a shout if you want to hear any more about my process or about what I do yeah cool bye I hope that was okay to you <laughs> um I'm gonna go okay bye